tin oxide, also known by the systematic name stannic oxide in the older notation, is the inorganic compound with the formula SNO2. It is not named tin dioxide because tin is a type 2 metal, and so is named tin oxide by nomenclature. The mineral form of SNO2 is called cassiterite, and this is the main ore of tin. With many other names, this oxide of tin is the most important raw material in tin chemistry. This colorless, diamagnetic solid is amphoteric. Structure. It crystallizes with the rutile structure, wherein the tin atoms are 6 coordinate and the oxygen atoms 3 coordinate. SNO2 is usually regarded as an oxygen-deficient N-type semiconductor. Hydrous forms of SNO2 have been described in the past as stannic acids. Although such materials appear to be hydrated particles of SNO2 where the composition reflects the particle size. Preparation. Tin oxide occurs naturally but is purified by reduction to the metal followed by burning tin in air. Annual production is in the range of 10 kilotons. SNO2 is reduced industrially to the metal with carbon in a reverberatory furnace at 1200 to 1300 degrees Celsius. Amphoterism. Although SNO2 is insoluble in water, it is an amphoteric oxide. Although cassiterite ore has been described as difficult to dissolve in acids and alkalis, stannic acid refers to hydrated tin oxide, SNO2, which is also called stannic hydroxide. Tin oxides dissolve in acids. Halogen acids attack SNO2 to give hexahalostanates, such as SNI6-2-1 report describes reacting a sample in refluxing high for many hours. SNO2 plus 6 high H2 SNI6 plus 2 H2O similarly, SNO2 dissolves in sulfuric acid to give the sulfate. SNO2 plus 2H2SO4 SN2 plus 2H2O SNO2 dissolves in strong base to give stannates, with the nominal formula Na2SNO3. Dissolving the solidified SNO2 NaOH melt in water gives Na2 SN6 2, preparing salt, which is used in the dye industry, uses in conjunction with vanadium oxide. It is used as a catalyst for the oxidation of aromatic compounds in the synthesis of carboxylic acids and acid anhydrides. Ceramic glazes tin oxide has long been used as an opacifier and as a white colorant in ceramic glazes. This has probably led to the discovery of the pigment lead tin yellow, which was produced using tin oxide as a compound. The use of tin oxide has been particularly common in glazes for earthenware, sanitary ware and wall tiles. See the articles tin glazing and tin glazed pottery. Tin oxide remains in suspension in vitreous matrix of the fired glazes, and, with its high refractive index being sufficiently different from the matrix, light is scattered, and hence increases the opacity of the glaze. The degree of dissolution increases with the firing temperature, and hence the extent of opacity diminishes. Although dependent on the other constituents, the solubility of tin oxide in glaze melts is generally low. Its solubility is increased by Na2O, K2O and B2O3, and reduced by Cow, Bao, ZNO, Al2O3, and to a limited extent PBO. SNO2 has been used as pigment in the manufacture of glasses, enamels and ceramic glazes. Pure SNO2 gives a milky white color, other colors are achieved when mixed with other metallic oxides e.g. V205 yellow, Cr203 pink, and Sb205 gray-blue. Tin oxide for this use is sometimes called as party powder or jeweler's party. Glass coatings SNO2 coatings can be applied using chemical vapor deposition. Vapor deposition techniques that employ SNCl4 or organot in trifhalide CG, butyl tin trichloride as the volatile agent. This technique is used to coat glass bottles with a thin layer of SNO2, which helps to adhere a subsequent protective polymer coating such as polyethylene to the glass.
Thicker layers doped with SB or F ions are electrically conducting and used in electroluminescent devices. Gas sensing SNO2 wires are commonly used as the detecting element in carbon monoxide detectors. SNO2 is used in sensors of combustible gases. In these the sensor area is heated to a constant temperature and in the presence of a combustible gas the electrical resistivity drops. Doping with various compounds has been investigated. Doping with cobalt and manganese gives a material that can be used in e.g. high-voltage varistas. Tin oxide can be doped with the oxides of iron or manganese.